Hey, I'm Profty. I'm not an expert at anything, but I love hunting our state forests in New South Wales. Here's just a few hints and tricks on how you can better find deer on public land. Before any hunt, it's really good to have just a sense of the terrain and some basic plan or structure to how you want to approach a forest. Here's a very popular forest in Moorago State Forest and here's my first thoughts when I see the place. Here in the fringe, there's private properties on the side. Normally that means um, farmland or maybe some private pine blocks and whenever I think of that I think of feed. This is where the deer want to feed. They'll also feed in the forest. They'll feed up gully systems like here, the base of a gully, and also further the way up. Poking up little side sections like this where you often find blackberry and other browse like that. As a hunter, I know that deer probably only want two things out of their day. They want to feel secure, they want to have shelter in the tops of gullies, and then they want to feed in the evenings and the night time. Once a year they want to root, but that's a a different matter entirely. I would start my hunt two-thirds of the way up the hillside. I'm combing the top of it like this. This gives me a great view of anything that might be bedded down at the top and a really good look at what's at the bottom of the valley. As I'm doing this I'm glassing and I'm looking for sign. As it gets on later in the day I might find my way following down a spur and getting closer to the feeding areas. I still think it's very important to approach it from the top, otherwise you can spook animals quite easily. And it's like a process of elimination. You know that animals are going to be down the bottom, so just eliminate the top to make sure that they're not bedding down there first, so you don't scare any animals out of the area. Let me just stress the importance of covering a lot of ground. You know, you might find some sign in this area, you might be following along the top, but if it's not showing up and you're not seeing any animals, not seeing any sign of animals, that's quite easy. Pop on over the saddle and start checking the next area out. It's pretty accepted that animals that have got a lot of hunting pressure are going to be further away from their food source, further up a hill where they feel more secure. It's a process of elimination. Start high, combing the top gullies, and as the day goes on and it's closer to feeding time, you might come down a spur and see what's going on further below. This is the principle that I'm going to use in my hunt today. I'm going to go into the central west of New South Wales and see if I can hunt some deer in a state forest. Yeah. So yeah, finally finally got out here, much later than I anticipated. Um, pretty hectic winds, gale force winds all around my area in the suburb and out here as well in the hunting spot. I can walk faster, I can cover more ground, not be so cagey and worried about cracking sticks, all that kind of stuff, just my sound isn't as much of an issue as it normally is. I'm, I can just race forward, right up nice and high, check out the top of a lot of basins and gullies, just and just keep working them and, and cover a lot of ground, and in a way, a very specific weather event like this um, is actually helping me narrow down what I need to do hunting-wise, so without any delay, I'll put it to the test. Good times. Well, I've just come across the saddle. It goes up the hill that way, that way, down to this big gully section I'm about to drop into. Yeah, I've already seen a little bit of sign at the base of this um, this saddle here, and that's to be expected. It's a low point. That's where a lot of um, a lot of deer are going to be wanting to travel the path of least resistance. Anyway, on we go. Low is all hell. I said no rain today, but this is yeah. It's got to be a red. I initially I thought it was fallow because look at all these tiny little marks that we get on the palms might have to do with that. It's a big red stag. So, <clears throat> I've been up high and found some beautiful territory. Really awesome to see where a lot of the rut happened this year, um, which is awesome. The deer aren't there anymore. Um, 
so I've got to start heading down, not all the way down, but so that I can see the lower parts of these gullies onto the feed areas because it's getting mid afternoon, about 3 o'clock now, and I'll just comb the bottom end of the hills and the feed areas until, until I'm done, until it's dark, hopefully. Let's see if I can time it right. Well, there you go. I just came right down to where I thought the feed area was going to be, and that's them just making their way down here to the hill, and of course straight up again. I had the choice between shooting, but I got I got work on red deer, big animals, you know. Um, yeah, just wouldn't have been able to pull it off. I don't have a midnight session in me, and and I got plenty of venison in the freezer. I was watching carefully, I don't think there was a stag with him. Hey, so it's like quarter past one, started at midday and hoping just for an afternoon hunt into the evening time. And just a new area that I haven't opened up before. And this is a great sign like that. So yeah, that's not fat like that's red. And red deer, that's a big prize, you know. I'm getting keen, but I had a camera down further into this gully, and I've never been up this high before, so I'm checking out that high, and I'll use the camera as a halfway point, and then I'll kind of work my way back. I'm not getting my hopes up too much. I'll hunt hard, and I'll see what's in this area. It's be mad. Red right deer. Two and a half minutes after I last chatted to you. Fuck me dead. You follow up the sign. This is what you do. I, I now, I, I, I put the crosshairs on her shoulder blades. She was just standing behind a bush, but I could see her shape well. Oh shit, you know, I gotta have a look. Now, there were three of them, and I fucking got one. Oh, I've been trying hard. Oh, I'm just stoked. I found a fair bit of sign in this area, and I've got a camera around here, so I'm just, I'll be having a look at that too, but. Well, I got a red deer, and I'm fucking stoked. I'm always stoked when I shoot a deer, but reds are special, you know, and they taste so goddamn good. I'm very glad I got a female. Um, oh, it probably wouldn't matter. It's July now, late July, August in a few days' time. Um, so I'll take any deer I can get, but... Um, Wow, she's got such a beautiful winter coat and winter mane. I've been in this gully system about four times since March. I've been putting a lot of work in. Um, the weather's almost always been against me every time. It's fine, you just work with that. I've always noticed a lot of sign every time. Still didn't manage to see any animals. I've just had a camera down there which I've collected and flicked through it. A couple of wallabies and a pig, but not a single sign of deer. Um, just as I... I was having a chat with the camera and having a look at some scout on the ground and I just kept moving through immediately, almost immediately, I get this big fucking whiff of deer. And it's all, it's like, Sam and hunters know it really well. Anyone who's had the chance to, you know, get one of these on the ground or, or a friend has, just give it a good smell on the, on the fur and it's so distinct, it's such a strong smell. Anyway, oof, it hits me in the face and it fired me up. Oh, I just fucking, I just kept moving forward and, and climbed higher up the hill. And that's, that's kind of what, what helped me along is that smell 
because you can get lazy really easily. And, you know, you just follow a trail and game trails can just suck you down into the gullies. Up in the head of the gully, that's where they're sleeping in some bushes and then warm three of them up. And um, reds, they can be a bit dopey sometimes. Um, all I had to do was just give her a second, second little squeal, a little fawn call and stop to have a look at me and oof, high in the shoulder. Oh, I don't know, it's not a great shot to take. I would have much preferred if I hit it lower, but that's just just fired up, you know, just just pumping hard, so I didn't get the shot that was the most ideal. But anyway, I, I bled her straight away because I had to go down and find my camera. But, oh my god. They're big, just big animals. This animal cost me nothing except a game license. And that is a beautiful thing. And it's for me, it's the only way I wish to hunt is on, on public land and, um, you know, I hunt private sometimes too, but, you know, these are here for everyone. Anyone who's willing to put the effort in and put time in, and time is critical, you, you, will, you will reap the rewards and you're going to see some beautiful things out in these forests. You can't just expect someone to give you a spot and run with it. It's selfish, it's lazy, and it's just, you're so fixated on the reward that you never get to enjoy this beautiful journey which is deer hunting this again fourth visit exploring signs different sides of the gully and this is the first time I've been up this high and man it's just pumping with sign there's shit everywhere and you know if I hadn't had that time to kind of move through and explore this whole hillside which is quite high up I wouldn't have managed to get this beautiful girl today and I wouldn't be filling my freezer this afternoon oh I just love it I'm so happy hoping that this whole kind of a series of videos I'm kind of trying to put together about how to hunt state forests could be helpful to some of you. Let's just hit those key points that I feel like I've learned is you do have to put in time and you have to hunt intelligently. You've got to ask yourself where are they where are they sleeping? Where are they feeding? Where's the sign taking us? Great times. The good times they are natural in this beautiful Australian bush. These spectacular gums around us. It's just eucalypt heaven. Big animal, big job and a long fucking way to carry her out, but if I put the bullet in, I'm going to put the time in. Cheers, guys. Maximum respect. And thank you. Maximum respect to you. Far out, she's heavy. I mean, it's just just the back quarter and I got the straps and extra neck meat in the, the bag but I can see the top of the hill. <laughs>